what was the line? And I'm like, put into YouTube, Rocktober Blood, uh, Bloody Pussy. <laughs> and I kind of felt like an idiot for Google searching that. And I'm like, mm. all right, well, let's have nobody look at my history. So... <laughs> Midwest, home sweet home in good old Indiana, place of small towns, cozy families gathered together, and fields of corn and rustic woods. But like any town, there is a dark underbelly that often goes unnoted. We are part of that darkness. We lurk in the shadows to bring you the best in horror, metal, and stories of the grotesque. This is Blood in the Cornfields. All right, welcome everyone. Another episode of Blood in the Cornfield. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we made it. We're still here. Yep. <laughs> Haven't gone away. Eight episodes in, and you know what? You know what they say about podcasts. Um, usually after seven episodes, that's usually when a podcast just falls off the deep end. <laughs> so I think we're doing good so far. Yes, we, we have some sort of milestone slash accomplishment going, Flo. Uh, I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll kind of start off. Uh, what's what's new? What what's going on in the world of horror or your life or yeah. music? What what what's new for us? Yeah. So one of the things I'm ex- personally excited about. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Satanic Hispanics is coming out finally. Really? Uh, it's a new uh, anthology horror movie. Sweet. Uh, that ta- that basically combines a lot of uh, Hispanic and Mexican cultured. Um, horror stories Mm -hmm. you know stories that are actually from our culture um and have put them into this uh anthology series also bringing in uh hispanic and mexican directors um to do it so keeping it authentic i am so excited for this you have no idea i'm like yeah my culture (laughs) is finally being represented (laughs) sweet that's good so we got that going out any anything else Um, I think the other thing is too, that I found interesting, or at least I heard about, and you kind of brought it up one time was, uh, there's a new nightmare on Elm street that's going to apparently be coming out. I don't know when, but I heard that new line is producing it again or is, uh, putting it under its label. Yeah, absolutely. Going back to new line. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's the thing with new line is it's known as the house that Freddie built. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's literally like their fucking slogan. Yep. Like, absolutely. (laughs) Without Freddie, there's, there was nothing else. No, because I think actually, I'll have to double check Mm -hmm. and you just threw this at me, but I believe they were close to bankruptcy and it's the movie that literally saved new line. If I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. those of you out there, you can probably hammer me in the comments and tell me, fuck you, you're wrong. But (laughs) I'm pretty sure that they were next to bankruptcy or at least collapsing as a company. So that's, that's pretty cool. And I mean, it's, you know, to pop out one of the most successful horror franchises Mm -hmm. when you're on death's doorstep is pretty badass. I mean, the other thing is too, without new line being a thing, I don't think we would have the new evil dead rise because that was a new line uh, produced movie. Absolutely not. That's pretty neat. Sweet. I also heard rumor, r- rumor, rumor <laughs> yes, please, in the mills. Say rumor. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I just heard from other uh, speculative, uh, like horror internet sources, uh, yeah. people that were sharing this news about the new uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. But there was rumor that Kevin Bacon could play <laughs> uh, Freddy. Okay, bring some star power. I, you know, I. I, I never second guess an actor until it comes out. Like, right. Cause there's been some choices where you're like, mm, I don't know how that's going to go. But, um, I, if Kevin Bacon does it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I just hope they don't do what, uh, that one, that, that recent remake I, of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. But the, I don't know. We haven't even know realistic the, Freddy. The, the little fella. Yeah, the little fella. <laughs> I don't remember his name. <laughs> I, I believe he was in like I don't know he was in he's, some other real so, successful shit. So I feel I should know his name. But I just feel bad <laughs> saying the little fella. Yeah, well, he, he's very. He is a little guy. Come on, it's a little is. ass Freddy. Be like, dude, come on, go away. <laughs> just put your arm out and keep him at bay. Be like, yeah, right? Nah, you're not getting me, dude. Well, and yeah, like he is a good actor. This man yeah. is. Uh, and real if, quick, if I'm not first. mistaken, the guy used to do voiceovers. Yes, uh, Jackie Earl Haley is the gentleman who. Uh, who was the new Freddy Cooper? Yeah, because he was in Watchmen and shit like mm-hmm. that. Okay, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, that was him. Yeah. Just a quick Google search. But yeah, no, he's a really good actor. Like, he also, I, I think, on popular opinion, I think he did a good job playing Freddy, yeah. but he's not intimidating. <laughs> <No>. Sorry. <laughs> Just a small fry. Just a small fry. Yeah. 
Uh, sweet. Well, that's that's good. Um, some of the stuff that I'm looking forward to uh, is definitely so it's it's already here, but on the on the new game front, um, I have been waiting for this fucking game for forever and hoping and praying that they don't bomb it and just <laughs> make it terrible. And that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game. Oh um, my god, that looks astounding! It is pretty fucking amazing. So I've played the Friday the Thirteenth, the Dead by Daylight, the Evil Dead, you know that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. And this one has a twist on it. Uh, So it plays differently. And how it plays differently is there's three family members. You get to choose between five. So when before the game came out, I heard these other characters, Johnny and Sissy. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) Who are they? Yeah, they're not real. And this is my franchise. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's anything that's my franchise, it's fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So these characters, Johnny and Sissy, like... Eh, they're kind of hokey. They're kind of stupid. But I get why they had to make two other people. Because you do three at a time. So a round is three family members, four victims. And the victim's goal is try to escape. And then the family members, like Leatherface, uh, the cook, and the hitchhiker, uh, and then, of course, Johnny and Sissy, they have their abilities. So, like, for example, Leatherface can destroy... Uh, obstacles and make it easier for you to maneuver and um the best part of the game is you run around and collect blood so you can get it from like little containers throughout the game or if you like attack someone you get blood and then you go over to grandpa and then you you feed him you feed grandpa no (laughs) and then he like and then it shows for a few seconds or depending on like what characteristics you have for your, your player no on way. what their grandpa abilities are. It's fucking amazing. They'll light up. And so then you can try to go get them. And it's the thing that's really cool. That's different about it is you're on a team. So mm-hmm. like if me, you and say like Luke are playing, mm-hmm. I can be like, Hey, you know, uh, we've got one out in the, the, the slaughterhouse. And all that sort of shit. And then you can kind of converse. And then you have traps where they have to, you know, disable them to get out. Mm-hmm. Or you can, you know, saw them and kill them. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. It's a blast. I absolutely love it. I am praying that they have a, a Chop Top character oh, skin I, added. God, I hope so. They have to. Like, and, and the game looks good. But the cool thing is, is the place I talk about, the the gas station, the Texas gas station, yeah. Bastrop, that I fucking love. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are ever in Texas, please go there. It's in Bastrop. It's fucking amazing. Um, so it's the actual gas station from the Texas Gym. So that's so cool. That is one of the maps. No. So the gas station that I love, that I've spent the night at, oh spent my like God. probably $1,000 at, you can get... That is so yeah, cool. It's, oh, it's fucking amazing. I buy all the shit from there. Like my yeah. Leatherface... Uh, Air freshener. Mm-hmm. I just bought this cool chop top toy. It's fucking badass. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's one but of the, the fact maps. that it's a map. Yeah, like I'm ah! literally playing in the gas station. I'm like, oh, it's fucking badass. That is. And so they have cool. like a slaughterhouse and stuff. But anyway, um, that game is awesome. It's out. It's amazing. I have one thing to Go add because I'm curious. So the Johnny character, he doesn't have a robotic leg, does he? No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> He's like, not Vilmer. No, 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 no. <laughs> just for no. That's from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. The Next Gen, yeah. Fucking weird. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey with yeah. his robotic leg. It's it's weird. It, it definitely is weird, but, you know, hey, no. So, no, uh, it's just a made-up character. Okay. He's supposed to be, like, another... I didn't even read his backstory. He was, is he story. an actual member of the Sawyer family? No, oh? no, no. It's made up. Him and, So Johnny and Sissy are not in, in the movies, okay. not referenced anywhere. Okay. They had to create them for the game so that you didn't just have just, like three people to play with. So that you have like two more. I guess that's true. Yeah. Right. I get it. Like it, when you're playing the game, you're like, okay, that's not really that cool. But you also are kind of like, it's not that bad. Okay. Like it kind of gives you another character to play. So it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But um, so that's out. It's fucking outstanding. Go buy it. It's only 40 bucks. If you don't, you're cheap as shit. And you shouldn't <laughs> listen to this podcast. So um, the next <laughs> thing. Oh, sir. <laughs> Get out of here. You hog bitch. <laughs> um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space yes. has a video yes. game. So oh it's been God. rumored. And even when we were talking to Luke, like it, it seemed like he didn't even know this because he thought it was still rumored. I saw gameplay. I literally saw gameplay. Oh, my God. So it looks awesome. I, I believe it is a deathmatch type game like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Nice. Where you, I believe, can be a victim or a clown. And <laughs> the cutscenes look great, but it's really hard to tell like if that truly is the gameplay. It looked like uh, there was someone shooting a clown. Um, so I'd assume that you could be a victim and stuff. But yeah, they're putting people in cotton candy and <laughs> just shooting them with ray guns 
and like oh my god that's so the, cool the balloon dog <laughs> down the street and shit so it looks badass i don't have any other information on it but look for that hopefully they're going to continue making that so oh my um, god that's everything i could ever want yes. as soon as that trailer dropped not too long ago i was like oh my god i need to play it, this and it looks legit too like it it looks really legit so i'm excited for that um on the music front Mm-hmm. Uh, a band I really like, uh, some of you may be, eh, depending on how you are with certain metal. They're a melodic metal band, but okay. in my opinion, I think they do it probably the best. Uh, they're a band called Era, and they just released a new song, uh, Pale Iris. Um, they're really, really good. Um, the music is structured very well. Uh, the rough, uh, aggressive vocals, and then the guitar player has like very, very melodic uh, vocals very similar to uh, the drummer for Under Oath. Nice. And some of you out okay. there grew up on them. Very similar to that vein, a uh, high pitched kind of, uh, but still very talented. Um, so they're actually putting out a new new song that just dropped this week. No info on the album, so look for that. I don't know. And then another band that's not metal, but they have some horror tie ins. Nice. I talked yeah. to you about them off podcast before. okay tell me so they're a band called gunship i absolutely fucking uh, love yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. yes they're like a new wave retro band i, like I think them. is what the mm-hmm. genre is called but they're basically the easiest way i can describe them is they're the best 80s band that's not an 80s band that's cool I heavy love that. synth like harmonies melodies all that sort of shit so oh, yeah. um how they have tie-ins to the horror community is they Obviously, so they're big. They sound like the 80s, so they have a lot of 80s reference. And one of their most popular songs, uh, Tech Noir, John Carpenter does the spoken word on the beginning of it. Really? Which is pretty cool. Yes. And then they have Tim Capello, who was the sax player. The set sweaty yes. sax yes. player? I love him. So I, yeah. And when I went to Indy to the convention, oh he was there. Oh, my God. He From... still, yeah, he's forced to wear the, the leather pants. Is he? He's probably like 65. Does he still believe? He still believes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like 65. He's still pretty jacked. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's beautiful. He's got the big chains and shit. I mean, he's forced to wear that, you yeah. know, because that's what people know him by. So, yep. Like, all right, whatever. Oh, my God. That's so um, cool. But yeah, so they are releasing a new album called, I believe it's called Unicorn. Um, It's going to be out September 29th. Uh, So the song Monster in Paradise is interesting. So this is the metal tie-ins, metal and horror tie-ins. Dave Lombardo of Slayer plays drums on the track. Oh my God. And you would never guess it. Like me being a drummer, Mm -hmm. I can hear it because it's very well done, but it's done on electronic drums. Mm -hmm. And it's like... It's a step above what their normal drummer would do or their drummer that I've heard before. Mm -hmm. And if you're a drummer, you probably would pick up on it just because of some of the patterns and the things that he does. It's Mm -hmm. just really well written drums for a song that doesn't require really well written drums. And then Mm -hmm. um, it features, I believe her name is Milky Way. She's from an interesting band called Wargasm out of the UK. Oh, okay. I've heard of yeah, that, Yeah, she's, she's a dainty yeah. bass player, and she's got spiky kind of blonde hair, mm-hmm. but she does a lot of um, harmony-type stuff, and it just carries the song. She does a fucking outstanding job. Oh, yeah. And Tim Capello features in this song no. again, playing the sax. I yes. fucking love that. So it's, it's pretty badass. Like, I'm really excited. It's not metal, but it definitely has some horror ties to it That's and shit. Cool. So yes, Gunship is fucking awesome. I do have one other one. I think I shared it with you not too long ago. It was, uh, (laughs) y'all know me, or at least the people that do know me know I hate The Exorcist, but I also have a love-hate relationship with it. There is a amazing musical that came out, and it's in California. Unfortunately, they need to make their way this direction. a little far away. They need to come to Chicago or something. Yeah. Um, But it's it's a parody rock musical of the exorcist called exorcistic exorcistic see i didn't even when you sent me that i didn't even read that i didn't even read that exorcistic is the name of it and oh my god if i if if i can if i can find a clip for y'all i will play it here yes because it is the funniest thing it's just oh like the song your mother sucks cocks in hell (laughs) is just oh it's already iconic Admit, when you 
sent me that, I didn't really get it. I'm like, is this a low budget? Like, are they trying to be serious? And now that you tell me they're not, it makes so much more sense. Oh my God. And it's like, it's balls to the wall. It's queer as fuck. And I love it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> there, so fa- I think it's uh, Father Karras's, uh mother is actually a character in this. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, I love this already. That's and she's awesome. like this flamboyant lady. And I'm just like, yes, this is what we need. And also Father Karras is also pretty flamboyant. So it's like, yep, this is for me. Well, transitioning into the actual meat and potatoes of the podcast. That's right. Um, Today we are talking about glam metal, ass rock, what it mixed in horror movies i don't know how else to describe it um we are gonna be talking about movies that have like 80s metal influences into them and they are goofy crazy horror movies as well so as y'all know (laughs) in the 80s we had the satanic panic yes which we've talked about we have talked about (laughs) and like a lot of movies were just kind of eating that up they were like Oh, this would actually make a really good horror movie. Yeah. And so we had a lot of horror movies that came out in the 80s. So, for example, and we're not reviewing these ones yet. We will probably get to them at some point. Mm-hmm. But some of the first ones that came out was Trick or Treat. Yes. Yeah. Um, Trick or Treat. Or Treat. Yes, yes. Uh, with Sammy Kerr. Mm-hmm. Long live him. Yes. Um, and then also we had Black Roses. Okay. That yeah, came out. Yeah, I don't even know about that one. It's, it's a really good one if you haven't had the chance to see it yet. And then also we had classics like The Gate. The only the only reason why it's it's uh, in that metal genre is because the kids spin the record backwards. And I remember that one metal. now. That was that's one of those when I fucking probably watched in like eighty nine when mm-hmm. I was probably like seven years old. And wait, let me do the math. No, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, but I I know I've seen that one. You would have been the age of the kids in the movie. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I I know I've seen that one, but that's one of those ones that I've not seen since I was like a child. Yeah. But I totally remember that. So we we thought uh, y'all might be in the horror community already, so you might already know these movies. You're probably like, yeah, yeah, I know that movie. So we're actually gonna do some obscure ones yes. this first time around, mm-hmm. because they are worth mentioning. Yes, they are. They are in the zeitgeist of horror metal, and we'd love to talk about them, because they are weird. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'll just tell y'all, mine has the greatest line in cinema history in it, <laughs> just so you all know, like, not even downplaying that upplaying that i don't even know if that's a thing i haven't no. seen yours yet oh, i yes. have a bootleg copy of beautiful. it but i haven't had the chance to see it yet it's beautiful <clears throat> but um the first movie that we're going to be looking at is called rock and roll nightmare all right and it's from 1987 it originally went by the name of the edge of hell interesting not very <laughs> similar titles <laughs> No? Okay. Right. And the only reason that they apparently changed it from the edge of hell to rock and roll nightmare is because rock and roll nightmare sounded cooler yeah, yeah, yeah. for video sales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, ah, no, I like that better. Them VHS sales, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the synopsis of the movie. A hair metal band by the name of Triton stayed the night at an old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere to record a new album. Okay. Said farmhouse is set up at the very beginning as being possessed by an evil entity that wipes out an entire family just out of nowhere. Mm. Um, so all of a sudden the band members uh, start to disappear one by one with evil demons possessing them in various forms. Interesting. Soon, John Triton, the lead singer, is left alone. Um, but it's not too long after that he realizes that he is going to come up against the Prince of Darkness himself. However, John also has a secret. Oh, he is an archangel <laughs> sent from heaven oh, to no. defeat Satan. <laughs> That's oh. right. All the band members were all an illusion. They were never real. What? Yep. <laughs> Shyamalan twist. <laughs> Not even a Shyamalan movie. <laughs> so is I okay? I'll just. Yep, they were never real to begin with. Okay. It is, was is there a scene in the movie where they poof, fade away? Like we're so. That's where we get into the meat, the potatoes okay. of the thing. All right. All right. So the movie first starts out, like I said, where 
it's it's bizarre. They set it up as like this kind of like Norman Rockwell farmhouse. You know, you got a mom, you got a dad. Yeah. Mom's in the kitchen doing shit. Dad's outside working, and then the little boys doing shenanigans. Yeah, you know. Okay. All right. Well, mom gets sucked into the oven. Oh, really? Yep. A demon full on grabs her and sucks her into the oven. Or at least that's what you assume happens. Okay, so it's implied. That- it's implied. All right. All right. It's very oddly implied okay. because literally when the dad goes down to investigate, he opens the oven and he looks and like he sees like the fires of hell in there. And all of a sudden this weird skeletal figure comes out and grabs him. Oh. And the kid's kind of left by himself to like kind so of So is it fend. a double parent baking in the oven? That's what I thought. Yeah. I was so confused. I'm like, <laughs> did, was that a demon that... <laughs> pushed him in or like that brought him in or was that her like yeah. what happened uh but it was an odd opening regardless so we have a killer oven okay we i like do. it i, I like know killer ovens and then smash cut all of a sudden uh there's we're following a band they're in a car and this goes on for i kid you not i think i timed it five to seven minutes okay you are in real time watching a fucking van drive down the street in various locations, <laughs> getting to that stupid farmhouse. They wanted to build up suspense, maybe. So actually, the reason for it is because when the movie was finally edited, they didn't have enough in the run times. Well, you know, so right. they put the whole fucking drive to that farmhouse you gotta, you gotta in there. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Oh, it's a schlog to get through. And honestly, uh, the only reason I have this movie or the only copy I have of this movie is a digital version and it has riff tracks on it (laughs) because that's the only way you can tolerate it, man. So they're like, hey, boss, that there movie's running a little bit fucking short. Oh, it's okay, man. Film Ricky driving that fucking van for about seven minutes. (laughs) Right. Get that shit just just crisp and nice. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Grab that van. (laughs) All right, we're going to get a shot here and a shot here. And oh, look at that. There's cows. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, yeah. So, yeah. No, that was Jesus Christ. That was a lot. Okay. Apparently, the movie itself was shot in seven days and each actor was paid $100. Hey. That includes nude scenes because there hey. are a lot of nude scenes. All right. So, any of you out there that need to make a movie, I will work for $100. I'll do nudes. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> as long as I'm paid. Good. Hundred dollars. All right. And the other thing is too, like, I wonder if this fucking movie had like sponsorships or not, because like there's literally scenes where the band they finally get to the farmhouse and they're having like a pizza night or whatever yeah. before they start recording. Which how the fuck does this farmhouse have like a recording studio in it? Did you know, it's one of them recording farmhouse studios that okay. are all around the nation. And it never it never it never explains either, like, the amount of time that has passed from the time that the the family w- mm-hmm. went missing to the time that these people are recording their shit. Interesting. Okay. It just jump cuts. There's no timeline. <laughs> it's bizarre. And anyway, like I, like I said, I'm wondering about, like, the sponsorship in this or if this was illegal or what all that entails. Because, you know, you see, like, Ghostbusters and shit. And, like, they have, like, sponsorship from, I think, Pepsi oh, God, or Coca-Cola yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. They have a Coca-Cola bottle in plain sight. And I'm just like... They're just like, fuck it. We don't care. Did, did they care? Yeah. They also have a fucking Archie Comics uh, sh- like, uh, shirt. shirt. Like, a, like it's like a full-on jacket yeah. that this man has on with Archie on it. Yeah. And I'm just like, huh. <laughs> yeah. I, they probably were like how I feel like we would be. Like, if we're putting episodes on YouTube and, like, yeah. I have a drink, I don't give a shit. I'm not going to, like, blurt it out unless... I guess the the companies wouldn't be pissed off. I I would hope that they wouldn't, you know, a free for all sponsorship. Yeah. If they get pissed off, they'll be like, well, fuck you then. I'm not going to drink your drink then. Yeah. Now take it off. (laughs) That's weird. They probably were just like, fuck it. They didn't care, you know? And and like, so it was the manager that was wearing this jacket. I don't know why I'm going on about this jacket, but it stood out so (laughs) much. It was weird. It's important. It was because it was weird. It was a weird choice. (laughs) It was like they saw something at a thrift shop and were like, Archie? Yeah, take he it, was in a band. Take it, take yeah, it, take it. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, yeah. To answer your question from like towards the beginning, the demons actually like start taking possession of different people one by one. Okay. So they first, I think, take possession of a lady. They Mr. like Rando. Wait, no, no. 
wait a second. They take possession of the manager. Oh, okay. They lure him away with a lady. So a demon turns into a seductress. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And apparently that seductress in that movie, in that scene, was the director, um, John Fasno's uh, wife. Oh, okay. All right. Full tits and everything. Oh, all right. Well, why not? You know, it's his movie. Right. He can do whatever he wants. That's right. That's yeah. cool, he though. He can rob zombie the shit out of it if he wants. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's his Sherry Moon. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, she comes out tits a blazing right. and seduces him. That's my him. favorite way to come out if I do say so much. <laughs> tits a blazing. Yes, I mean that's how I exit the shower into my bedroom. <laughs> tits a blazing. <laughs> so you'll love this then because there is a shower scene that goes on way too fucking long and it's okay. a, and yeah, Ricky, it, get that shower scene long. God We're damn it, short. <laughs> <laughs> and it's with the the main character Triton and his girlfriend fucking in the shower. All right, and I'm like. So, is this softcore? Mm-hmm. I- I'm genuinely curious. Is this We're bound to stumble on some softcore at some point in this podcast. And I'm just like, wow, there's a lot of boobs in this. And I <laughs> never realized it. Because I did watch this a while back, like, when I was much, like, like I don't know, teenage years. Yeah. Uh, when my husband and I first started kind of going out. No. And I was like, I don't remember this much boobage <laughs> in it. <laughs> but yeah, nope, lots of, lots of nudity. Right. But yeah, possesses the manager, so he gets picked off, and he starts acting strange, you know? Wow. And everybody's like, okay, you're you're acting weird, but okay, we'll still do this video or yeah. and whatever else, this album for you. And uh, then all of a sudden, the drummer, the poor drummer, with an Australian accent. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a bad Australian it's accent, it. too, uh, gets taken. I think he's also seduced. I don't think it's by the same woman i think it's somebody, somebody else, else? Okay. yeah um and then the weird part about that scene the woman turns into a zombie oh okay not even a not even a pretty zombie oh no well is he is the guy a necrophiliac so is that like right up his wheelhouse i don't <laughs> you know what? i don't i don't keep shame nobody <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe but, they already knew that was his thing that was his thing that was yeah. what tempted him into it yeah i mean you know drummers do go for that <laughs> <laughs> shit dude did you <laughs> no, just god damn time, just a time or two you know when i was in college you gotta try everything so <laughs> so yeah so that was a thing and then like the girls start getting picked off too so like one by one i think one gets picked off by like a weird little muppet looking creature okay that's the thing with the demons in this thing they look they look like muppets oh okay they got like big eyes they got weird little lips and they look weird they're strange Mm, okay they got strange designs not to mention there's one scene where like they're out frolicking around and like near this pond and like this guy's chest opens up Hmm. and like there's a creepy hand that crawls out and grabs her and it's like what the fuck's going on that's interesting okay so yeah so yeah everybody gets picked off one by one and uh like i said they all start acting weird there's also a scene where like the little boy at the beginning Mm -hmm. comes back Okay. He comes back and he's possessed and he has like this weird mask on. It's obviously some sort of weird mask that's like plastered to his face. And I'm wondering, <clears throat> is this really a little kid or did you get a little person to do it? Like, yeah. I'm genuinely curious. Um, And I actually looked it up and apparently, no, it is a little kid. It's the director's son. Oh, of course. <laughs> I told you. He's, <laughs> he's a zombie. He is. He put the mask on, and apparently he goes and possesses someone else. Okay, awesome. All the possessed people kind of just die off, like they just they they disappear. Mm. They're they're gone. Like they try to they try to seduce Triton mm-hmm. at the very end, like the 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 main dude, and then that's where he busts out this amazing line, and I'm gonna read it to oh. you quote for quote because it is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Sweet. So the main character Triton is in his study. And these, like, little demon creatures start trying to fling themselves at him. Okay. And in a com- comedic way, he gets, starts dodging them. So almost like Tom and Jerry style. So, okay. like, he... A demon flings itself at him. He goes to go... He drops his pen, so he grabs it, you know? Yeah. Or he goes to go take a drink or something like that. So he spins around in his chair. And, like, another demon, like, misses him. Interesting. Weird shit like that is yeah. happening. And then all of a sudden, now that fucking nowhere, a gigantic demon appears, a gigantic demon Muppet appears, okay. and it's apparently Satan himself. And I'm like, 
Wow. In, as in Muppet form? In Muppet form. Okay, well. It's, it's a bizarre looking creature. And then is that like the culmination of the movie? <clears throat> That's like where it basically starts to end. And then this is where John Triton reveals himself. And he goes, like he's like losing patience. He goes, you're wasting my time, bub. Bub. And the demon uh -huh. and the demon says, "This is incredible. It is almost no fun to kill one so stupid as to not know who it is that it slays him. You are in my domain, and I will kill you as I have killed your pitiful friends." And then John says, "Ah, you killed no one, bub. What? <laughs> <laughs> he literally says it. What? And then he goes on to say, or is it less familiar to call you Beelzebub? Or do you prefer a bad man? Or as the Hindus called you, Shaitan? Or as you were known to answer to Araman, Belial, Apollyon, Asmodeus? You see, see, I do know you. <laughs> because he's an archangel. Yeah, wow. He reveals himself to be this gigantic archangel, and he literally, he's already beefed, like a beefcake <laughs> yeah, to yeah. begin with. And he just rips off his shirt, and he's known as Thor. He's a bodybuilding champion, actor, songwriter, screenwriter, historian, vocalist, and musician. <laughs> and he reveals himself in his full glory, looking like a beautiful hair metal diva okay he's literally got the hair he's got like uh like little leather like pants on tight leather pants on leather, he's yeah. got the like leather cuffs on damn dude he's got the eyeliner yeah oh he's he's working it sweet i think you saw a picture of him yes didn't you? yes i've seen a picture yeah <laughs> oh my His god he's out and shit yep yeah. so yeah this man and the reason why I call him Thor is because that is actually what this gentleman calls himself. Uh, his name is John Mikkel Thor. Okay. And he actually, that's how he describes himself, too. Okay. He actually he had... introduces people at coffee houses <laughs> like that. I'm Thor. Yeah, I'm a bodybuilder, musician. A philanthropist, yeah. historian, I'm everything. Screenwriter, you know, yeah. Yep. It's on his business card, too. <laughs> In <his> fucking quotations. <laughs> and so the end of the movie is him having this stupid ass battle with this demon where like you don't believe a thing that's happening on yeah. screen he's like like fighting against it and it's like oh my god but you could take that down because it looks like a flimsy ass puppet <laughs> that's awesome oh my god and that's the end of the movie is like he defeats satan okay and he goes about his business all right he goes back to being <clears throat> thor because those people they were never real to begin with they were all illusions sweet he, he set up a trap so he could capture Satan. Well, okay. I guess now we're going to talk about Rocktober Blood. I am so excited to hear about this one because I literally have not seen it. I want to see it. Like I said, I have the bootleg yeah. of it. So I'm excited. So it's, it's an interesting flick. I'll start off with that. So a little info about it. So the director, her name is Beverly Sebastian. Oh, it's a lady director. It is, yes. Neat. This was, I believe, her third movie that that all I could find. <laughs> First one was called Gator Bait in 74. Oh, Didn't wow. Look it up. Don't have a clue. Uh, and then Flash and the Fire Cat, which I thought sounded almost trauma-like. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Almost almost sounded trauma-like. So, Rocktober Blood starred uh, Trey Lauren as Billy I. Harper and <laughs> Donna Scoggins as Lynn Starling. Uh, the movie is available on Shudder, if you all know. Oh, nice. It is available on Shudder. So, That's interesting awesome. fact about Donna, who was uh, one of the leads in there. Uh, Donna, Donna only had one other movie. I found this really strange. So, she did this movie, uh, October Blood, 1984, and then didn't do jack shit till... I mean, she, she probably had cool things in her life, but as far as... <laughs> um, she didn't do anything till 2023. And she's in a movie this year called Fetal Position. Now... Wow. The movie is interesting. I couldn't find a ton of it. I saw just a 20 second clip that was random as fuck. And I think I understand what it's about. So the premise of the movie is a old, almost looks like a bum, wants to abort his alien baby. Oh my God. So I think it's like a spoof and we won't get political with this podcast. Oh so, no, no, but just not so at all. Know, but it just sounds bizarre. It's, it was created, I believe, <laughs> in response to the bill passing of the... Roe v. Wade. Yes, yeah. I think. Now, 
If y'all made the movie and I'm off base, fuck off, whatever. I just saw like 30 seconds of your film. It's supposed to be a short flick, but I think it's political, a radical thing for that. Now, hopefully I'm, I'm right, but who knows? Anyway, the only scene is this older dude looks like a bum and is like, hey, I, I need to get an abortion. And this girl's like eating pudding and shit. And then it cuts and then oh my it God. says the name fetal position. And it All said right. that it's a seven minute short film. Now, whether that's just seven minutes right now because it hasn't fully been finished or whether it truly is a seven minute short film, cool. So, yeah, but I just found that really odd. And she's not even starring in it. Like, she's a protester. <laughs> she's just a background character. Yeah, so it's like you went from starring in a movie to just <laughs> never doing a movie again, and then you're a protester in this random-ass short film. So in this Rocktober Blood movie, question, Yep. who is she? Like, is she a starlet? No, she is no. she just Well, kinda... like in the movie? Yeah, in the movie. So she plays basically the background vocalist. So Billy is like an attention whore and, and loves to sing and... Ah! Belt out the high vocals and <laughs> yeah. shit. So, you know, Judas Priest style, King Diamond, that sort of shit. Um, so he, he like loves to do that. And then she's supposed to harmonize. And it starts out with them recording and Billy like holding the spotlight with the one earphone on oh, yeah. and the other off his ear and singing under the moonlight or some shit. I don't know. They're in a studio. Um, <laughs> but she does the background vocals. So, um, yeah, it starts out and they're in the studio and she's trying to do some background vocals and she's not feeling it. It's like four in the morning. So they go to retire. Then... Billy, just out of nowhere, starts deciding, like, hey, I'm going to kill all these motherfuckers. Like, what? Like, bandmates, this, this chick, I'm going to try and kill them all. I'm going to kill them all one by one in the studio. And it's so, because he's the best. It, yeah. Billy <laughs> has quite a bit of an ego. So that's kind of how it starts out, um, as him killing them. And then it has cutscenes where, like, he's apprehended, and but there's no scenes for that. So it's just, like, implied, like, hey, he was apprehended. And then he was executed. So this movie has a lot of shitty cutscenes to where it's oh, like, wow. they're like, ah, cut that. Um, we don't know how to transition to this next part, so we're just going to throw it in there. So there's a lot of cutscenes that get a little bit kind of weird, but um, the main premise is that this Billy Ike dies after, you know, by execution, and he's killed almost all the bandmates, but he didn't kill Donna Scroggins, and she carries on the band oh. uh, without him. And so she's singing all the songs. And then in the movie, he hunts her down. He's trying to hunt her down. And he's playing games with her and all that sort of shit in the meantime. Yeah. So that's roughly the premise of the movie. Um, not anything earth shattering. Um, but you think that it's Billy I, you know, coming back and nobody believes her and you're crazy, bitch. And, yeah. you know, all that sort of shit. So um, throughout the movie, um, it says there were more songs, but I'm calling bluff on that one. I don't remember <laughs> any other songs. There were two songs in the movie that they fucking rehashed and just pounded into your brain. Was it as bad as uh, Power of the Night from Critters? <laughs> they repeat that damn yes, song? It's, so it's basically the same, except this okay. one has two. They just pound them home. And the one of them is uh, called I'm Back. And, like, the lines, I don't even remember them. I forgot them. They were really cheesy and stupid, but I didn't pay attention to that one as much as there's a song called Rainbow Eyes. And it's the song that she does background vocals for. Really? And then she steals it, and then she takes it and sings in Billy's place. But, like, Rainbow Eyes, I couldn't get out of my head that it sounds like a deal ripoff. That sounds like a, a deal song, you know? Yeah, like Rainbow in the Dark yeah. Rainbow, Rainbow in Eyes. The yeah. I just couldn't get that out of my head. So they just sing these two songs like throughout the entire movie. Oh my God. Um, so it was, it was pretty crazy, but the thing you need to know about this movie, well, uh, hold on. Let me, there's a bat. They literally have the best line in all of the entire oh, cinema. I, so, you've been pumping this up. Oh, so I'm excited. Oh, just it. fucking just, tell me, tell just me, tell you me. wait, just you wait. <laughs> Not going to get there just yet. So oh, damn it. Um, with, <laughs> with this movie, um, so what I didn't necessarily like about it, the cutscenes, I get it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is what it is. It's a low-budget film. But the thing that pissed me off about this, and when you see it, tell me, the glare, any light that's in this has a visually piercing glare. <clears throat> and they weren't able to edit it out, whether they had a shitty camera. So, like, is it like, a lens flare? No, it's like, uh, it's like almost as if they had a flashlight on the camera, and whenever it hit a metallic material, the glare coming oh. back just 
starburst out. Oh, like, God. I'm talking everywhere. There's a scene where they're f- driving on a boat <laughs> in a lake, uh-huh. and when the sun hits a metallic, it, it flares back. It's really bad, and I don't know why oh, they Jesus. left it. Like, it's really it bad. It sounds bad. The glare's terrible. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. See, I was thinking, like, you were meaning lens flares, and I'm like, oh, okay, someone's got a, like, you know, a fetish for lens flares. No, th- it, it is bad. It's th- any metallic ma- material like, it's or like any they didn't, light. It's like they didn't know how to, like, film something like that, and it's they like, had, oh, shit. They have no clue. Like, I thought, did y'all watch this back and edit it at all? <laughs> right. They're just like, let's let that bitch roll. Like, <laughs> we don't have time. Light, I'm, I'm not joking. Any light in the movie produced a glare. And it's awful. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty terrible. So that brings me to the best part about this movie that is worth watching for itself is they have a badass line in it. The most badass line <laughs> ever. So one thing I'm going to warn y'all that I made the mistake because I'm sitting, you know, last night going over my notes and I'm like, what was the line? What was the line? And I'm like, put into YouTube, Rocktober Blood, uh, Bloody Pussy. <laughs> what? Hold on. That's just a little. That's a little. Okay. Uh, word to the wise, don't Google search that. Don't Google. You will come up with a lot of tampon tutorials and pad tutorials and all sorts of other imagery that's not that appealing. And I kind of felt like an idiot for Google searching that. And I'm mm. like, all right, well, let's have nobody look at my history. So <laughs> to cue that up. So the scene starts. Uh, the uh, lead singer, uh, Donna, I keep saying her name is Donna, but she's Lynn in the movie. So Lynn in the movie has mm-hmm. gone to a cabin and she's jazzercising with some friends and shit. And as you do in the 80s, as you do, as you do. So then uh, Billy, who you think is Billy, uh, calls on the phone. He prank calls twice. And then on the third one, I'm going to literally read this line for line because it's fucking amazing. All right. So. Lynn answers the phone and asks, what do you want? So Billy, like, (laughs) says, I want blood. I want your hot, steamy pussy blood all over my face. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yes, your hot, steamy pussy blood all over my face. You say his name's Billy? Billy I, baby. (laughs) And there's, like... There's no reference of her possibly being on her period or like he just came off with that. No, that's what he wants. And I wanted to know is like, Trey, did you come up with that on the fly, dude? Or did your writer actually write that fucking line in the script? Oh, my God. Yes, that's badass. (laughs) Okay, like when you say that because they're like over the phone, it's giving me Black Christmas vibes. Wasn't his name Billy, too? Oh, fuck, I don't remember. (laughs) Uh, Maybe, but yeah, it's just absolutely (laughs) ridiculous. I was like, and and it's out of nowhere, literally nowhere. You think he's going to be like, you know, I'm coming for you or like, I'm going to get you. No, he goes with... Wanting your hot, steamy pussy blood all over his face. Oh, my God. And he's, like, laughing when saying it. And I'm like, dude, if you came up with that line on your own... And, you and should be proud of like, it, my dude. The, the director's like, bang and line, Trey. Let's leave it in. <laughs> <coughs> so, That's so funny. Yes. So <laughs> after you get past that uh, just amazing quote, um, the movie, eh, you know... The only twist is that, like, you think it's Billy I back from the dead because mm-hmm. they executed him. Nah, it's his twin brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, he has a twin brother, which they don't name. They don't say his name. Oldest trick in the book. Yeah. So he just has a twin brother. <laughs> and then he's, like, you know, up rocking it on stage and can magically sing just as good as his other brother. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. And then the movie just ends with him rocking out on stage. And then. Did like, she die? She did? Donna uh, or yeah. Lynn? Donna or Lynn? No, Lynn didn't die, I don't think, in the very end. Okay. But it's weird. So they, like, have these dancers on stage, and Billy has this, like, long microphone stand that has, like, a knife. And I couldn't figure out, he's going around to these backup dancers and, like, f- either fake stabbing them, as in, like, Guar style, like, hey, yeah, I'm getting yeah. murdered on stage, but I'm, I- I'm just fine, I'm not being touched. Yeah. Or in the movie, he's really supposed to be murdering him. It's that bad that I couldn't tell whether it was like war like, style fake yeah. or just fucking real. How and then weird. he goes and just systematically has he's ah! rocking out, you know, stabbing people and shit. What the so fuck? So it's pretty crazy. 
pretty oh, crazy. Now I'm excited to see this. And then it just abruptly ends with him like, yeah, given like a you know freeze frame. Does a picture. free frame? Oh my yes. god! Absolutely, yes. Even better. <laughs> oh my so, god! Yes, that is how it ends. And yeah, I mean, I'll have to rewatch. It's pretty shame on me for not knowing if you killed Lynn. But I was so not invested by no. the time I got to that moment. No, by the time you have the Shyamalan twist of, it was the twin brother. <laughs> I I wouldn't be invested anymore either. I just, cool. Yeah, Neat. I was just like, let's finish this bitch. So, Neat. Um, yeah, in, interesting movie. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely will give you a good laugh. But I mean, I've ruined it for everyone. So, you know. Whatever, well, but so I had to I. tell you about the line. But I had you to need tell to, you about the line. That's the greatest damn line ever. You need to watch these movies for the sheer weirdness of them. Yes. They're just bizarre. Yes. And you'll be... Watch them with a group of friends. That's how I advise you to watch these, because that is the only way you could probably watch these, is with a group of friends. Absolutely. And side note, because I'm ADD and my brain goes everywhere, Ghoulies uh, comes out in 4K. This oh week. my god. Yes. Oh my god. Ghoulies comes out in 4K. So. Oh my god. Yes. So so you don't if y'all don't know, I fucking love Ghoulies. Ghoulies is amazing. I love I love favorite. I love like little munchkin gr- like ghoul things. I I, I not, love gremlins. Dude, I could not tell you how many times I legitimately legitimately not fucking bullshitting you mm-hmm. thought my butthole was going to get eaten out by right? a little ghoulie on the toilet. Oh my I god. I swear cuz I watched that movie that probably is around a, when I was 8 yep. and I thought my o-ring was going to get chomped <laughs> off by some bald ass <laughs> little dude with the sharp teeth. <clears throat> yeah, no. Totally yeah, thought that. I have a similar story in the movie store. I saw that that image of that yeah. ghoulie popping out of the goddamn toilet and I'm probably like 5 years old and it's like shit fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. Shit. But you can't say that that wasn't awesome marketing yeah. on full. No, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I, I, I must ask: How do we feel about the actual metal elements of these movies? Like, were their songs actually good? Um. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the songs weren't really good. Apparently, the band that did it was called Sorcery. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, the Billy Dude just belted out shit. Um, and I mean, it wasn't terrible in like, a, a, I don't know. It's, it's like, the thing is that I didn't like is it's, you could not distinguish that band from like any other ass rock. Like they didn't have anything that stood out. It was just mm-hmm. for a, you know, I don't, I don't imagine the band sorcery had much success off of that, but right. you know, so yeah, no, it was pretty terrible. The Billy guy, he could sing. I mean, he could hit some high shit, but it's not like whatever. That's kind of the same with mine. Like, I was kind of looking it back up, just kind of refresh my memory. There was, like, actually five to six songs in this movie, and I only remember three. Okay. Well, I only remember three of them. Um, but, yeah, they were all sung by Thor, the the gentleman. Sweet. Because you know. he is a music screenwriter. Music screenwriter, bodybuilder, everything. Esthetician, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it literally it shows Thor for every every fucking thing on here. But like the one I I do think that I will never forget is the challenge, the song at the very end challenge. where he's like battling this Muppet demon. Because it was okay, it felt like a knockoff of the final countdown. Oh, okay. I kid you not. That's okay. what it sounded like. Honestly, the metal itself, which is like glam, you know, yeah. air metal, it sounds like anything you would hear in the 80s. Yeah. There's nothing that makes yeah, that it stand mine. apart. Just, like, you can't distinct it from anybody else. No, I'm sorry, Thor. There, there wasn't anything there. You made an impression on me. Thank you for being you (laughs) but no i i wish there was more to it and and we'll go into more you know later on uh as we do more metal reviews of horror movies you know that have metal elements um we'll find better better music to kind of talk about i i still think sammy kerr uh, with trick or treat, trick or treat. Yeah. that's a banging album. I actually yeah. own that. Album. Yeah, oh, yeah. So that's different. Yeah. You know, that's different. Yeah, and so it's sad that you know this movie that you worked hard to put out. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, um, seven days worth. <laughs> Hundred dollars for nude scenes. Hundred dollars per Don't forget actor. That, listeners. $100. For nude scenes. For nudes, and I'll come out with tits a blazing. Tits a blazing. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'm also not gonna, not gonna, you know, shit too much on people, but you know, it is hard to make a movie. I have so many scripts on the back burner that I'd love to do. 
good for them for being able to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And actually put something to film. I mean, it's, it, I knock, you know, we'll, we'll knock some of the shit time. Yeah, Whatever. yeah. But course. like, you made a movie that's actually like, I'm watching it. I'm in yeah. one fuck Indiana, Indiana. I don't know where you are, but like, you you made a movie that people are watching and reviewing. That's fucking cool. Like, right? I'll never knock any shit to, to be bad. I may be like, oh, it's a bad movie, but yeah, still, it's like, terrible. you made a movie, you know? <laughs> like, you wrote a script. I can't do any of that shit. So, yeah, yeah no, totally. <clears throat> no, I, I agree. So, like, yeah, no, it, a word of advice for y'all, if you do happen happen to have the chance to watch said movies that we've talked about today, please do. <clears throat> I said, please oh, yeah. do it with a group of people. I don't give a shit. Do it while you're drunk. Do it while you're high. Whatever you want to do. But Whatever. have fun and be safe doing it. You know <laughs> what I mean? That is true. That is true. <laughs> Sweet. All right, folks. Well, that kind of brings us to the end mm -hmm. of our episode. We hope you uh, liked it. Uh, we <laughs> you definitely enjoyed for, our shit. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> open for comments. Remember, $100, tits a-blazing. Um, <laughs> sweet. So, what we want to leave you guys with is look after each other. And good night, cellar dwellers. Bye. That's perfect. <laughs>